The sermon for this Christmas day is from the Gospel of St. John, verses one, chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. The sermon is entitled, The True Light. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. A words from our Hebrews text this morning. The radiance given to us, this unique radiance, right? By his mercy of our Lord, the exact imprint of of the nature of our Lord. How much he is the one true God of love. The true light of God wrapped in the babe with swaddling clothes. The glory of God lying in the manger full of grace and truth, grace upon grace, the word made flesh. This babe lying in a manger, the Christ. This light is no ordinary light, but this light is the light of life. That this unique light shines in the darkness and darkness absolutely will never overcome it. In general, I know for all of us, we need light to live. Just imagine living in complete darkness. I know I was, I don't know if I always tell this story, but I guess I will tell this story now. But when I used to serve up there in Washington, I remember there were many a days uh, where it would be raining for probably a month straight uh, with clouds for a whole month. And I remember turning out of the church parking lot in the middle of January, and I was sitting there at the red light on on Milton Way, and a light appeared. Not some extraordinary vision from God, of course, (laughs) but simply the sunlight. And I looked at it, and I said, I almost forgot you existed. I did. And I smiled, and I closed my eyes. You know when you see the sunlight? For the first time in a month, I don't know if you ever know what that is like. I don't know if you do. But you sit there and you you feel the sun on your eyelids. You close your eyes and and you take it all in. Because after all, you need vitamin D, don't you? I know in Southern California, we, we take that for granted. But this was not the light that John the Apostle was speaking of. He was speaking of the light in the midst of... Darkness, not clouds, not rain, right? Not just because the sun doesn't come up. But John was referring to spiritual darkness. And that portrait of spiritual darkness is the separation from God. That we, as it says in Ephesians 2, are spiritually blind, dead, and enemies of God. We are by nature children of wrath. Spiritual darkness, it's there. We know it. How do we know Adam and Eve fall in the garden? There we know that they had the eternal communion, oneness with God, right? Made in his image, the light of life, God with them, God and man together, tend to the garden. You have dominion over all things. This is all yours, Adam and Eve. Just don't eat from that tree. Basking in the radiance of the glory of God. That was the place to be. Yet when the serpent appeared, we know that he was promoting another light. A light that looked attractive to their very own eyes. That looked so good that if they just ate of it, they would be like God and have the light of life. Surely you will not die. 
But as we know, the evil foe himself is the prince of darkness, the father of lies, one who disguises himself as an angel of light. And there they fell, hook, line, and sinker. And because of it, the consequence would be for us, as this spiritual darkness would wrap humanity around. And there we live in it. Spiritual darkness, separation from God in the midst of sin and death. See, it's important to know what darkness really is, right? Because darkness isn't something that we can escape ourselves. We can't just flip a switch and hope that the little light bulb comes on and, and this light of light will somehow illumine our hearts and minds or that this physical sun will come out and give us life that we need over the ails and the afflictions and the sufferings that we face. But this darkness is quite deceiving. I think at times, even in our sinful nature, we don't even know that there is darkness before us. So it reads in John 3, the light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest their works should be exposed. Of course. The great temptation of our flesh of sin is to live in darkness, lest our works should be exposed. And darkness is to live, separated from God, separated from His Word. Not the Word that we want to see, but the Word that is Holy Scripture. Isn't that the defining line for all of us? Do I live under the Word of God? Do I have faith in the word of light, or do I flee? Do I flee to the treasure trove of fleshly goodness? Whatever we desire, whatever we go for, no rules, no strings, we are our own little gods. The buffet table of sin is there. Just take it and eat it, whatever you want. Indulge and find comfort in this darkness. The deception is that after a while, we love the darkness completely and we flee on this path. We tell ourselves we need nothing else but ourselves and what we desire. See, the devil doesn't tell you that. He says, go try it, do it, see where it goes. And soon enough, you find yourself not looking back. Others might deal with darkness in a different way, right? We look at darkness and say to ourselves, I just need to climb out of it. I just need to snap out of it. I need to break free from this darkness by my own human strength, my will, my works, my morality. I just need to figure it out. Climb this ladder to the very light of life. Again, this is deceiving, as we know, because we know we cannot do this ourselves. As we talked about Adam and Eve and the doctrine of original sin, we do not have the decisive power to obtain such things in our own way. All the meanwhile, the devil is snickering, knowing that he is leading us away from the very word of light, the light of life, away, away from the word of God, away from the cross, away from the empty tomb, and ultimately away from Jesus. The fact is, without the light, we are caught up and dead in the darkness. The nature of sin, we know are, we are bound. There is no way, even if we tell ourselves that we are righteous, no matter how much we have done good, still we fall short in sin. Helpless we are. Think about that. You know, we, we do the things that we know we ought not to do. We do the things that, that we hate. We do the things that we very well know are against 
God's wor word and his law. But there, by the grace of God, he sees a world caught up in their iniquities, and yet he sends us the true light. That indeed we repent of our sins. You know, the Lord, the Lord could have just said, enough. I'm done with humanity. But no, the exact imprint of his nature is the radiance of his glory. His gracious glory, the glorious rays shining down upon us. Not just shining down upon us, but coming to us in his word. The word made flesh dwelling among us. Even better, an even better translation would be tabernacling among us. That is God with us. The design of God, the exact imprint of who he is, the nature of God is found in the sending of his son, lying in that manger full of grace and truth, the embodiment of the only unique light that could defeat and overcome sin, death, and the power of the devil that is before us. The Christ who overcomes darkness, the light of light. There is no other light like Christ. Because this light, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, the very light that delivers you by the grace of God. And there he is in a manger. This light would grow all his life, living as the light throughout his whole life faithful in his whole life as a light of the world, overcoming temptation uh, from the devil, enduring his own nature of hungering and thirsting, of tiring, of weeping, enduring the complete humiliation of what it means to be in the Word made flesh. Jesus lived obediently to be the light for you, to be sinless for you, to fulfill the will of God for you that no one else could possibly accomplish. But there Jesus lived as the true light that would lead to the triumphal entry, entering into God's fiery wrath for you. See, so Jesus is the true light because he never, he never flickers. The true light never fades. The true light is faithful. The true light is eternally powerful, and our Lord, this is who he is for you, that even in the midst of the words on the cross, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Even in the darkest hour, Jesus, the true light, never fled from what he was to do, to be your light. From the manger to the cross, becoming sin for us. Jesus shouldered the curse of, of sin and death for all of us. No more would eternal darkness and condemnation be our final destination. No more would this death sentence envelop us, but rather in his work as the true light, we have been set free. The cross, enduring as the light, the cross where Jesus, nothing would overcome him. And though the disciples, yes, they were grieving his death, not even death would bring this light down. But there Jesus, as the true light, broke the grave, rising on the third day for you. And through this true light of Christ, there our faith resides in his work, in his promise, in his gracious gift to us, the radical gift, the free gift, the gospel that to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. Those in the faith, yes, indeed. 
you are the children of the one who is the God of light, where darkness has been overcome. Eternal gloom has been cast out. In the midst of all that you may be facing right now, this light is yours. The light that points to the body and blood shed on the cross, your sins are washed away, your sins atoned for by the work outside of yourself by this very light who shatters darkness, defeats darkness, and washes you clean all into majestic splendor, holy and blameless in front of God. The light coming to you. Coming to you this day in the supper of the Lord. There Christ is as well, grace upon grace giving you his very own body and blood, God with us, enlightening you with these very gifts that you are given the forgiveness of sins through the very light that is Jesus' body and blood. This is your greatest gift. The true light, Jesus. The forgiveness of sins, eternal life, salvation. The assurance, the certainty, the promise has already been laid out for you. All is finished. And you are his. The radiance of God's glory is the exact imprint of our Lord's nature. Thanks be to God for this gospel. Thanks be to God for his mercy. Thanks be to God that we have been set free. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Christmas Day Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.